And so there's something about, especially this process of the, the pruning of the brain, which is something I hadn't uh, in the in the book that I hadn't really understand in the the pruning process in the adolescent brain. Talk to us a little bit about what these processes are in this, particularly this process of pruning, and why is that relevant for both parents and for therapists as well as for teenagers as, uh, in, to understand. Well, Rich, you're not alone in not knowing about pruning because no one knew about pruning. This right. is this is the first step of what's called remodeling. So in general in the brain, you have the basic cells and neurons, they get connected through synaptic connections. And in general, you know, early in life, genes influence how those connections will be made and they continue to influence that throughout the lifespan. And then once we're born, once we're out of the womb, then experience begins to influence those connections and how they're formed in various ways. And you're gonna make some and lose some. And so there's this natural process of synaptogenesis, which is the creation of new synapses, synapse modulation, strengthening of them, even letting some go after you overproduce them early in life, which is how nature sets the brain up. So pruning is something we knew about. Pruning means letting either synaptic connections go that have already been formed, so you're pruning it away like a garden, or actually letting neurons themselves die away. And so you're pruning away not just the leaves, but the branches, if you will, of a tree. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so that's where the pruning word comes from. It's a natural, healthy process. But we thought that, in general, the child going through life would just accumulate more and more synaptic connections as you learn from experience. Laying down myelin would then allow you to turn experience into a skill. So when we watch the Olympics, you see skills because people practice so much, they lay down myelin. So mm -hmm. those are the two processes we look for, synaptogenesis and neurogenesis, creating structure, myelinogenesis, enhancing the coordination and balance of that structure, and even something called epigenetic changes where you alter the modulation of gene expression. Those are the basic ways you change the architecture and therefore the function of the brain.